Hello, hello, hello. Did you miss me? I missed you. It's good to see you again. I know you didn't. You weren't left as orphans as you had the great bearded one. Hey, buddy. What's going on? We got a couple of things we need to do and then we can um, rock and roll. A couple of things we just, you know, need to wait for a few people to show up. A few folks off of uh, all those that slow delay. Hey, Terry Lynn. Sue. Jane. See, look. You, you like me. You really like me. Anyway, hi, Bobby Joe. The Lord be with you. Waiting on the folks to get here. Steve, the Lord be with you. Let's see how you do. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You had a brilliant theologian the last few days with... Pastor Finker, um, a guy who has the beard to be a master of Hebrew. Um, I do not. Um, so you're slumming with me today. I told, uh, I told my, uh, uh, administrative assistant. Yeah, it was Sally Field. Good, good catch, mom. Good catch. Um, told my administrative assistant today that I was back and he was like, you were gone. I was so busy enjoying Finker. Can, can you be gone more often? Um, yeah, we've got a lot to do today. And I, I, I was granted permission by Finker yesterday as I was screaming at the, um, um, as he was just having such fun, uh, slumming with the George. You got it. Um, Borkart. My friends call me Borkart. Uh, uh, I'm named after my father, and I named my son after my father. I'm not a big fan of the name George, but you can call me Borkart or 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 or, um, or, or PB. Uh, but um, I'm screaming at the at the at the iPad yesterday. Don't go to chapter four, man. Three. Don't go to chapter three. But Faker was having such fun. That, um, yeah, can't stop a man who knows his Hebrew. But we're going to take a look. Uh, we'll skim the first eight verses, which is what he, um, um, what he did. And uh, remember, this is a discussion, not a, um, everyone seemed to miss me more. Hey, buddy. Oh, there you are. Okay. Okay. Time to rock and roll. Now you're going to notice a little difference in the um, in the screen today, because um, I'll give you a little bit more English. Because uh, while Finker is a master of of, of Hebrew, um, my uh, undergraduate degree was in Latin with a uh, minor in, in uh, classical languages, basically. Uh, I did have a uh, Hebrew at the seminary, but my Hebrew is not nearly as good as my Greek. And so we will cheat with the Greek from time to time. Um, like Luther, who didn't have a good grasp of Hebrew, but uh, knew how languages work. That's how we'll muddle through um, our way through this. Um, so starting with 3.1. Uh now the serpent was um, he was he was um, more crafty. Now crafty isn't a bad thing, um, and I, uh, crafty is is sort of a um, you know crafty isn't a negative. He did have a grasp of Hebrew, but it wasn't as good, as, and his Greek wasn't as good as his Latin. Aaron, no, look at Aaron. Finker's going in there trying to save Luther from a comparison with Borkart. Um, remember in the, um, 
Erasmus, when he would argue with Luther, would quote German, uh, would quote, quote Greek, because Luther's Latin was really, really good, and his Greek was not as good as his Latin, and it was, it was just a, a sort of annoy him. But Luther's translation of the New Testament is so good because of his grasp of how languages work and his understanding of context. And so uh, his German translation is amazing. So we'll, once again, with the permission of the dean, um, muddle through here as you are slumming with me. Crafty is not a bad thing. Crafty isn't a negative thing. Um, uh, the Septuagint translates it as wise, but that's more insightful, prudent. Um, he's expedient, uh, would be a good way of, of sort of thinking about it. Um, so the serpent was more expedient than all the other beasts of the field, which the Lord God had made. And here we are still with um, uh, uh, Yahweh Elohim. Uh, my first name's George. Pastor Finker's given name is Aaron. Um, our God's given name is Yahweh. Um, when you say Jesus is Lord, you are saying Jesus is Yahweh. Um, that's who he is. So, um, uh, um, away we go. So he's more crafty than all the other beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. Okay? Um, and he says to the woman, did God really say, you, um, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden. Finger was amazing on pointing this out yesterday that, that this is how it all starts. It starts with calling into question the Lord's words, trying to find a place, a dent in the armor of, of, of her trusting in. And she had heard this, Luther says, from the preacher in the garden, Adam. So she wasn't there when the Lord God said, all these trees are yours except for that one. You eat of that tree and you will... Um, Dyingly die. Was that the way you translated it, uh, Pastor Finker? I think, um, I like to just say die, die. Like it's a very emphatic die, die. The verb is repeated twice. And so you eat of that tree, you will die, die. Um, dyingly die, you will surely die. Um, okay. So the woman says to the serpent, um, we may eat of um, eat of the tr fruit of the trees of the garden, but from the tree which is in the midst of the garden, um, uh, but God said, we may eat of the trees of the garden, but God did say, you shall not eat from the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, whoops, lest you Die, die. Moat, moat. Die, die. So, um, there it is. All the trees are yours. You can't eat from the tree in the midst of the garden. Now, where does the touching come in? Touching you, touching me. Now, no, uh, the, the, um, the, the problem there is she has now added to the Lord's words. And that's, that's the real danger. Satan would have us either subtract or add from the Lord's words, and she adds a law. And while we're here, um, it's good to knock down. Hi, Priscilla. Good to see you. It's good to see. It's good to, to sort of knock down the idea that the whole intention of everything that's going on post fall is to get to back under the law. Like we were under the law and then we broke the law and God did the gospel thing. And now God's goal is to put us back under the law. Um, that is wrong, wrong. Do that and you'll die, die. We'll get to that in a bit. Okay? Well, that Hebrew's a little small. Let me make it bigger. That's, that's giving me a little... There we go. Okay. Verse 4, and that's the problem. The serpent said to the woman, you will not die, die. There it is. Now, crafty equals evil. So if you, if you thought um, the serpent was expedient... He was prudent, likes to cut corners. Um, 
As soon as he says, you will not die, die, the serpent is full on evil. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. Go straight to the hell that you that was made for you because he is flat out evil. Okay. For God knows that the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. I love the duel. Um, the eyes of both of you will be open, and you will be like God. Ki Elohim. You'll be like God, knowing Tov. And ra, you will know good and evil. Now, and 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 we need to sort of contemplate this for just a second because when they eat from the tree that they're not supposed to eat from, their eyes are open. Hey, bud, you want this? He's he's punishing me. He's a little upset with me, as you can see that is known as the dog cold shoulder. He's given me a little bit of, he's thrown shade on me. Look at Thor. I'm here, but I'm not here. You took a couple of days off from the videos and I'm not really happy with you. And so I'm going to eat your treat against my will, but I'm going to act like you are not here. Look at him. He's not even looking at me. That is stone cold. Ignoring my existence. I don't know what Pastor Finker didn't say, but um, I, I thought I listened to him pretty good, so I would not disagree with him at all, Pastor Lestico. I'm only assuming that you are trying to get under my skin again. Um, and so the woman saw that the tree was tove, uh, and it was a delight to the eyes now, that is a construction that I do not understand. And um, able to make one insightful. Um, that's, not, that's not the word for wise. And the Septuagint does not have the word for wise. The, the Septuagint has the word for um, insightful. It has the word for um, um, uh, your eyes will be opened. And you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman looked at the fruit, saw that it was it was delightful to the eyes, and it was it was seasonable to make one observant or um, uh, uh, understanding. And I, I think that I think that that what I think that wisdom and 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 Pastor Finkers is Hebrew is far better than mine. Um, wisdom is reserved for the fear of the Lord. So this is not. Um, um, hakma. This is this is a different word. Um, the, the Septuagint does not have the word Sophia, as much as it has um, kata noeo, which means sort of. She saw that this was going to do what the what the new preacher said that it would do. Um, it would allow her to. Um, it would allow her to distinguish between good and evil. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. She's not going to get wisdom from this. What she's going to get is something else. And the Septuagint's use of observant, it's able to make her observant. Now, I do not know how fruit is able to make one observant, but this fruit is able to make her observant. And so she says, well, this is great. She took of the fruit and ate. And she gave it to her husband. Who was with her. And he ate. So the idea of, and, and, and Ficker was amazing on this. Um, uh, 
her husband is not go play, over there playing Duck Dynasty, being a man. And she's left to her own devices. He is standing there vacating his office as husband and head of the family. Uh, let's take our ears off of, and at any time, and at any time, he, he, he could have brought the whole thing to an end by by knocking the fruit out of her hand in a non-abusive way or saying, hey, we're not going to listen to this guy, we're, this snake, we're going to listen to Christ. But the Hebrew, Im, he's right there. He's with her. And that's one of the, I was so excited. I was clapping and cheering um, as, as Pastor Finker said that yesterday because it's so very, very, very true. Is it observant, like curiously in, um, interested in? I actually like Terry Lynn, Pastor Finker's translation of it. Um, he says, uh, 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 as iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. Um, he was, that, that she said, so like the devil attaches the lie to the Lord's words. He just doesn't want you to know good and evil. That's what that tree is all about, knowing good and evil. And she looks at the fruit and observes that it, it it's going to help her know good and evil. Now, we got to always remember the fine print on these things. Because it does help her know good and evil. But um, not in the way that, um, yeah. So he gave, it to, he gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. And the eyes of both were open. The eyes of the two were open, says the Septuagint, and they, um, what do they know? They know good and evil. And what do they know about themselves? That they are evil. That they are not the Diet Coke of evil, just one calorie, not evil enough. That they are pure on, full on, hardcore evil. They look down and see that they are naked. Yesterday, Finker pointed out um, that, hi, Will, I, if you'd have been here earlier, I would have made a Will Robinson joke, uh, especially when the serpent, when, when, when the woman added the term, um, I'm going to make a joke anyway. When the woman added not touching it, that was a danger Will Robinson moment. Um, please don't call her Eve yet, even though we know her to be Eve. She's just simply the woman or the wife. She doesn't become the name Eve until the end, and that's important. So the woman they see that they're naked and they sowed fig leaves. And this is why I don't believe that you should think of this fruit as an apple. You should think of it as a fig. As a fig. Because if they got figs, which they do, in the Mediterranean, um, and and like figs and dates, um, if they're sowing fig leaves, making themselves loincloths of fig leaves, then you should think more that this is a fig or a date than you should think of as it as an apple. Apples, I don't believe, grow in the Mediterranean, but figs and dates do. Okay, um, but either way, it's this is just theologizing because we don't know what kind of fruit that is because we don't know where that fruit, that tree is. So they sewed fig leaves together and we've been covering ourselves and our sins up ever since. Good afternoon, Brian. Okay. Um, verse eight. And so they heard the um, coal. Now I like voice. Um, again, um, and this is a theological translation, not a, um, not a, it's sound. I don't have any problems with sound. Okay. Um, cold can mean sound. Um, but the, but the word also can mean voice. 
And so they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim. Uh, Elohim. Um, halaking, walking in the garden. And I love the trans the, the translation of garden in the um, in the Septuagint is something that I really, really, really had a happy time of as I was preparing for this because it is para de sus, paradise. And so, um, so they, uh, so they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim, um, trekking through paradise in the, the Ruach, the, the wind or breath or spirit of the Yom. And I liked what, uh, Finker said of this cause he made note of it. Um, Spirit, breath, spirit, breath, that's spirit, breath, words, um, spirit, breath, word, John, one. And, 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 and so you, you want to just sort of pause there and go, huh, that's very, very in interesting. Yeah, I, I see what you're doing, Lestico. I, I don't like you very much. I love you uh, because the climate of Eden was Mediterranean pre-fall. I don't know what the climate of pre-fall Eden was. I just know that if I were a betting man, I'd go all in on dates and um, or or figs instead of um, instead of apple. So they so there's the there's. The voice, they hear the voice. You could think of it as rustling as he's going through the woods. That's fine. Um, and that was a fine translation by Finker. Um, I like voice. I like voice. Because it it, 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 it it more connects word. Um, so uh, they heard the voice of, of Yahweh Elohim um, walking in the, in the, in the paradise, in the, the breath or the wind of the day. Um, and what did they do? Hithpio. They kept themselves hidden. The Adam and his wife kept themselves hidden from the face of Yahweh Elohim from the face of God amongst the the trees of the garden of the paradise. This is what sin does. This is what sin does. Um, sin causes us to hide from God and we've been hiding from God ever since. When God shows up, one person, one of us has to go. Either he has to die or we have to die. And so, um, hi, Brandon. I missed you too, buddy. Somebody has to go. And so they go diving for cover in the midst of the trees of the garden. No, I don't have the GPS coordinates of, of uh, across my eyes. But somebody yesterday did ask, is Eden a real place? And yes, it is. Well, where is it? I don't know. I don't know. It's hidden from us. By the way, what kind of God walks with you and talks with you? And he walks with me and he talks with me and tells me I am his own. What kind of God does that? Ah! Fingers says, Eden is where Jesus is. Wow. Wow. That's excellent. And that is two points for both Brandon Simino and Finker 
for that excellent save. And you know, Lestico, it would you would do well to be more like them. <gasps> the God that walks with you and talks with you. The loving God that Bobby Joe just referenced is none other than Jesus. When you have Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God, um, walking through the garden, walking through paradise in the breath of the day, there is no way that you cannot think that this is Jesus. And if you want to get on me and go, four page single space letter about how this is the pre incarnate Christ and not Jesus. Of, of the gospel, I I don't care. Pre-incarnate or not, the God that walks in the cool of the day who's in the garden is Jesus. And if you think that, then the rest of this is going to have a lot more meaning. Exactly. The pre-incarnate Christ is the Jesus of the Gospels. Please don't write me a four-page single-space letter. If you do, send it to a Higher Things, Holt, Missouri, care of Aaron Finger. But the Lord God said, Where are you? Said to the, uh, called to the man and said to him, Where are you? Uh, the life is full of, uh, parents asking their children questions they already know the answer to. Okay. This happens all the time. Um, I like to use the example of my kids when they were little and I went into their room and there was a six year old and a four year old and they're, uh, looking at this fan and the fan is going at, um, a thousand miles an hour missing a blade. And the bunk, top bunk bed is bent, the, the gate of it is bent toward the fan, which is missing a blade and about to launch the whole house into orbit. And I look at the two children looking up at the, uh, at the fan and I say to them, is everything okay? Are you two all right? What happened? Nothing. Is there something wrong with the fan? Nothing. I don't know. And I said, really? The first one says, I said, you don't know oldest son? And he's like, I don't know. And I said, you don't know youngest son? And the youngest son points at the oldest son and goes, I don't know. I mean, I knew what had happened. Some young pup, probably my oldest, did a Peter Pan off the top bunk grabbed hold of the fan blade, trying to catch it. The, the fan blade came down. He came down. The fan was now going at a thousand miles an hour, going to launch the whole thing into the, into the, into the stratosphere. We ask these questions because we want our kids to confess their sins. He asked this question, knowing the answer to the question, because he wants his kid to confess his sins. And he said, I heard the voice of you in the midst of the garden, and I was yara, I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten for the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Yes. Yahweh is trying to get, and let's let's do this. From the rest for the rest of this, I'm going to replace Yahweh with Jesus. Jesus is trying to get to the forgiveness point. He's trying to forgive you. I want you to just see that there is a pile of trees 
and he is so throwing shade at me that he will not even look at the treats or look at me. And the Adam said uh, to him, (laughs) that woman, the one you gave me, (laughs) she she gave me of the fruit of the tree and I ate. So, um, we've got a long way from poetry. This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Songs. Adam looks at, Eve looks at Adam and goes, you write the songs that make the whole world sing. All of that is gone. It's replaced with, um, I like this from, uh, from Finker yesterday. Uh, that, let's see what happens with that fruit. You eat it first. That's Adam. Let's see if you die, die. Let's see if you die, die. Let's see if you die, die. So we went from, I love you. No, I love you. No, I love you. No, I love you. To, um, to a universe of that woman, the one you gave me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Which, which blames her and blames the God who gave her to him. If you would have just left me with that guy, then I would have been just fine. But no, you had to do the whole, it's not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper suit fit for him. So he blames the woman, but he also blames the God who made him. And so, Jesus... The Lord said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent uh, tricked me and I ate. Which is true. Um, uh, That's a hith. hith That's a... um, he, he beguiled me. He mesmerized me. Um, he, 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 he Jedi mind tricked me. So, Thinker's helping me out here. Adam could have brought this whole thing to an end by taking responsibility for being Christ for her. Saying that that's my sin. I did it. Don't blame her. Um, This would have been side. See, when you go to John 20 and you see the pierced side, then you see a husband who takes the blame for his wife. Adam 2.0 dies for his wife's sin. Adam 1.0 looks at his wife and goes, her fault. And the woman is no different. He mesmerized me. He beguiled me. He cast a spell on me. Uh Uh-oh, it's magic when I'm with you. Cars. It's 1980s. Patrol. Uh... Adam 1.0 is the chief priest to Judas. Take care of yourself. And then, and then Aaron from Lestico, God, the children of it, the, the congregation you gave me made me create the golden calf and I worshiped. Verse 14. And Jesus said to the serpent. And this is important. You know, he doesn't, um, he doesn't ask the serpent why the serpent does what the serpent does. 
He just says, because you've done this, cursed are you above all of the animals of the field and above all the beasts of the field. On your belly, on your belly you will you will go. And dust you sh uh, 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 dust you will eat all the days of your life. So he doesn't like let me let me let me let me let me find out from you what happens. Mm -mm -mm. He doesn't do that. What he does instead is just lay out the law for you. So when the evolutionists are like, you know, snakes used to have legs. We we we. We do not go. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. When the evolutionists go, snakes have let used to have legs. We go, <laughs> we knew that already. That's like Genesis three. Uh, and, and I loved about thinkers, uh, uh, Genesis one. And you want to watch those videos. You want to go back and you want to watch those videos on YouTube. If you're not watching, if you're just picking it up now, because he does a great job of saying that this isn't a science textbook. That is not what's going on. Darwin isn't a pimple on Yahweh's bottom. He isn't. When God's creating the heavens and the earth and he's laying it out for in Genesis 1 and 2, he is not like, oh my gosh, I need to make sure that, that nobody believes that evolution is real. I read Genesis 1 like a children's sermon. You should read it the same. He made a big light to rule the day. And you could hear Moses telling the children that, and they're like, ooh, what's the big light called, children? It's the sun. And a, and a little light to rule the night. What's that called, children? The moon. Oh, he made the stars also. And he made things that creep, and things that crawl, and he made things that swim, and things that fly. Because you have a loving God who made you. And he lays out how he made you. But he also does a little bit of taking some cheap shots. They're not cheap shots because he's doing it over against the devil, the world, and your sinful flesh. Dear little children, you weren't made by the sun god. Because I didn't get to the sun until day four because I'm your light. Fifteen. I will put... Um, distance, I will put um, hostility, enmity between the two of you. Um, uh, I will put enmity, hostility, The serpent being put on his belly, is that considered the fall of Satan from heaven? You know, I don't know, Earl. That is a great question. I I think that, that the serpent being on his belly is a real-life reminder of the fall. Um, Jesus says that he saw Satan fall from heaven after he saw the gospel being preached by the 70. So um, I would connect it more to the preaching of the gospel then I would be, I would put it here. So I'm going to put this hostility between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. Um, and um, Paul is really good quoting the Septuagint here to say that spermatos is um, singular. Um, that spermatos is singular. And so your seed her seed. Her seed is Jesus. He shall. Um, okay, this is a, this is a pun, and I personally love puns, 
But the thing to do with the pawn is you have to keep the pawn together. Um, and so, however you translate this Hebrew word, you just need to be consistent that you translate it in both places the same. So he will crush your head and you will crush his heel. Or he will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. Or he will chew your 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 head and you will chew his heel. Um, as long as you as long as you translate them both the same. Okay. Um, wow, that's an interesting thing. This is translated Tereo in the Septuagint, and I need to. I need to sort of, I will need overtime to figure that out, okay? Um, and this is Jesus saying he's going to save you. Um, Heel, footprint, hinder part. Um, so if 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 the if you have a poisonous snake and you crush its head, it'll die. It's done. But in the course of you dropping your big boot on this. It strikes you. Then you will probably die. So let's go back to the Genesis earlier stuff. The day that you eat of that tree, you will surely die, die. You will die, die. What Jesus is saying to Adam is really, the day that you eat of that tree, I will die, die. Because I'm going to die to save you. I'm going to take on your flesh, and I'm going to die. What's most, I mean, the, 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 the thing here is, de before death comes into the world, or as it's coming into the world, however you want to, before anyone dies, Jesus is going to die first. Ooh, we got a, we got a, we got a finger comment. This is the only spot in the Bible where it's woman's seed. In the biology of the Old Testament, women don't have that. Here is prefigured promise of the virgin birth. And that's why he's the dean of theology, friends. So I will multiply. Uh, before there is a death, Jesus is going to die. I like if you're translating it finger as foot I'm going to I'm going to um um I'll take that too. The woman's seed will get a fatal wound on his foot. I like that. Why not? Continuing on. He's going to die first though. I mean, the day that you eat of that I will surely die. That's the kind of savior you have. That's the kind of savior I have. That's the kind of savior Terry Lynn has. That he's going to die. He's going to die to save you. 16. I will, and he said to the woman, um, I will greatly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. It's that absolute thing. I will, um, I will, uh, Great, great. 
I will gratingly great. I will multiply um, your pain. Um, in in pregnancy and so I, I in pain you will bring forth your children um so having the babies is going to be painful that's a that is that is a universal truth that you could ask anyone Maybe even a pagan said, so what was the, the, the curse on the woman? And they will say, without hesitation, childbirth, pain. And yet, right from 16, from 15 to 16, the way that we will be saved is through childbirth. The birth of the Son of God. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. And your um, your desire will be to your husband, and he will. Um, the Greek here is. Curie use, he will lord over you. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will, um, he's gonna have dominion over you. And this same word is used in the next chapter as. As sin is knock, knock, knocking on Adam's door, on, on Cain's door. Uh, sin is crouching at your door. You must master it or it will rule you. Your desire will be for your husband. And he will, he will rule you. And I, I, contrary um, to is probably too forceful, says Finker. And I, I like that. So you got this, you have all this love for him. And he's gonna... He's going to rule you like a punk. I don't think that is Eros, Terry Lynn. You, you just, you got all these, you got all this sort of, um, uh, the, the, the Septuagint uses the word, um, um, uses the word turning or returning. You're, you're going to always be sort of turning away from him, but he's going to rule you. And this is a curse. This is a curse. This is a curse. How many times do I have to say that? This is a curse. And the only way this curse is, is to be dealt with is forgiveness. The Son of God dies on a cross for his bride. Uh, Adam 2.0 takes the curse upon himself and changes the way ruling over happens. No longer is it, uh, get me a beer when I want a beer or else. Now it's, I'm going to take the bullet for you. Trust that I'm going to take the bullet for you. Let me stand in front of you and take the take the arrows and of the devil, the world, and your sinful flesh. Let me take your sins upon myself and let me die. No longer does it mean mean this is what I want when I want now. 
Now, after the Son of God shows us and takes that curse upon himself, it means... I'm going to die for you. I'm going to die for you. Let me die for you. Which is, if you think about it, the hardest thing to, in the world is to let him die for you rather than you die for him. Now, I need to, um, yeah, it's not going to make me a sandwich. Now, I have run out of time here, which is just terrible. Finker manages to go through this, these materials faster. But this is just as well because I need to grab some of chapter three as I go into four. Um, all I can say to you is, is, is just be aware of, of how absolutely wonderfully gospely this is. Before there is sin. I'm sorry, before there is a death, the Son of God's going to die. He's going to, 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 to crush the head of the serpent, but his own foot is going to be pierced, crushed, struck, however you, you, you run the, um, the, 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 the pun. Him first. What Adam fails to do, the Lord Jesus will do on the cross. Think about it. If you eat of that tree, I will surely die for you. I'm Pastor Borkart and a Krabby Pants dog. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a blessed day.